Hey there, live like your nail color gals. Are you kind of a big deal? You are if you lean into you and your big dreams. But watch out and don't be surprised if others aren't on board and think you're a little too big for your britches. Today's gal pal, Erin King, has your back. Our conversation around her book called You're Kind of a Big Deal, Leveling Up by Unlocking Your Audacity, was so good that I decided to divide it into two parts so you can really take it in and benefit from Erin's energy, insights, and funny phrases. But first, before we dive into part one of our conversation, have you taken my quiz to determine your nail color persona? I always ask my guests to share their results because it's a fun way to get to know them. All you have to do is go to livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz, answer a couple of questions, and in your results, discover your specific nail color persona, there are five, your built-in strengths, and how to tap into those strengths when chip happens. Again, go to livelikeyournailcolor.com forward slash quiz. Now let's get talking with Aaron. Tired of so much chip happening? Discouraged by so much downer news? Weary from chronic crisis? Don't let the chips keep you down. Welcome to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast, where the tips of your fingers and toes are ready to inspire you to not give up and to keep creating the business, career, and life you want. In each episode, we flip the chip and let our fun nail color with that crazy fun name cheer us on to remember our strengths, embrace the power of choice, see life as an adventure, and know resilience is only a touch-up or change-up away. Get ready for a good time and a good laugh with your host, Mary Foley. Welcome back, Live Like Your Nail Color Gals. You know, women are often told that dreaming bigger and exuding confidence Those are the keys to achieving personal and professional success. Well, here's the deal. While big dreams and confidence might get you started, they won't fuel you throughout this marathon to get over the finish line. And today's gal pal says that in order to keep going through thick and thin, you need something more. And we'll find out what that is. International keynote speaker, three-time entrepreneur, and super motivating gal pal, Aaron King, helps you step into the role of the CEO of your life, and better execute your responses to challenging feedback that you know you're going to get from those outside of your, those in your world. Now, she's written a really cool book called Your Kind of a Big Deal, Level Up by Unlocking Your Audacity. And she shows you how to step into what she calls big deal energy. I love that. So why you can finally step into the life you've dreamed of living online, offline, and all the time. I love that how she says that. So let's keep stepping into that right now. Hey, Erin, welcome to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast. Hey, Mary Foley. How the heck are you? It's so good to see your face. And thanks for having me on your super creative, clever, unique, fun show. Oh, well, thank you. That says a lot from someone who also does a podcast, you know, for Success Magazine. And let everybody know what's the name of that so they can check that out. On Your Terms, about living a life you truly love on your terms and no one else's. Well, you know that when I start every podcast, I always ask my guests, hey, to take my quiz called What's Your Nail Color Persona and to find out if it nailed you. So Hmm. tell everybody what turned out to be your nail color persona and if you think the description really nailed you. Well, this is so fun, by the way. Um, Who does not love a throwback to like 17 magazine quiz days (laughs) of, you know, playing MASH and all this kind of fun game stuff. So I love this concept. It's interesting. So you have these different choices, solid sister, glitter gal, amazing adventurer, naked Nelly. They all sound very wild and exciting. Solid sister seems like the most boring of the options. And that's the one that I pulled. (laughs) So I think maybe this is an exercise in how we think we are versus how we actually are or how we like to see ourselves in our own minds versus the reality of how the world perceives us. I don't know. There's all kinds of probably psychological Freudian rabbit holes we can go down with this, but uh, I'm a solid sister. (laughs) Here's what I'm thinking. Knowing you, and we've known each other a few years, that I think solid sister is not a bad thing. In fact, there's an aspect that really describes my experience with you. And okay. that is grounded. You're mm. solid. You're not easily thrown off. 
you know, stuff comes at you. I know that you've done a whole bunch of things business-wise. There's, I mean, life has continued to throw stuff at us, particularly during the pandemic party. Um, yeah. I'm just saying you don't have a hot minute uh, now and then. It's simply that, you know, it's one thing to be uh, dinged and thrown totally off course and not, you can't get yourself back up or get rerouted again. It's another thing to go, um, I, you know, that hurt, but I'm going to keep going or I'm going to figure it out. And that's the thing that I think I really notice about you. And, you know, since we've known each other the last several years, you've taken your uh, your speaking degree, uh, degree, you've taken your speaking career to a whole nother level. Talk about leveling up, which is part of what your book is about. And, um, you know, it's easy. I've seen a lot of keynote speakers get rise to that kind of level and they are all that in a bag of chips, right? Kind of a thing. Mm. And um, so that to me, that's not your my experience with you. So that means to me again, solid sister. Now, when it comes to the colors, you said you wear a lot of, uh, you said, you said, really, you said to me uh, offline, um, you really do light pink, right? <laughs> yes. uh, and, and, and typically you do light pink because your color that you often wear is this hot pink. And you thought it was just a little too matchy matchy, right? Yeah, that's true. I think we all have our power color, right? Yours is right. red. And right. there's just something about the energy that a certain color brings. And right. In our line of work, when you have a ton of strangers in a room, you need to step into whatever is going to make you feel as badass and fearless as you possibly can. Right. For me, that's an unapologetically feminine color of hot pink. And look, I have a whole section of my closet that is just all hot pink, all the sizes. We got the summer size. We got the PMS size. We got the winter <laughs> size, right? It's like some of them zip certain times of the year, but the bottom line is they're all the same color. And what it does for me, Mary, is opens up that headspace where I found that, speaking of big deal energy, you know, I found that I was wasting way too much time as a woman focused on, gosh, what am I going to wear? What's appropriate? Is it too short? Is it too tight? Is it stylish? And I'm just, you know, I love when a beautiful outfit on a woman is happening. I can see that it's lovely and I appreciate it, but I don't truly enjoy fashion. Like I have a lot of girlfriends that are, they really enjoy it almost like a creative outlet. They really love putting things together. And, and for me, it just, it makes me feel really stressed out. So I found that I was wasting way too much time on what am I going to wear and not enough time on how am I going to serve? Mm. And so I just pulled the old classic Steve Jobs, insert a million uniform people here. And I can't tell you the headspace that it has freed up for me to just know that it's one less thing that I have to put energy towards and it can be sort of managed a little smarter on, you know, my audience research, on what are the key problems in the organization, on how can we punch up this story or tighten up this landing and really delivering what matters, which I truly believe if if people know you're going to come in a pink dress, it sort of almost takes away that moment of everyone judging what you're wearing, which sadly as women, mm -hmm. people do a lot harsher than the average stale male pale speaker is what it right. is, right? So. Right. No, I I actually really love it. And it does speak to your energy as well as your message. So, so, you know, hot pink, whether it's on your nails or on your dress or any part of your outfit. Okay. Hot pink, pink is the quintessential female color. So you're right. You know, you show up unapologetically female is what you said. Now, here's the funny thing. The hotter the pink, the more chattier the person generally is. <laughs> Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> right? That lands. Well, I love the title of your book. You're kind of a big deal. It just makes me laugh. And it makes me like, yeah, I, I am kind of a big deal. You know, there's yeah. part of me that gets a little bit like, am I really a little uncomfortable? We'll get to that. But I was thinking to myself, Aaron, you are kind of a big deal. Because I was thinking just four years ago, when I was the president of the National Speakers Association of Virginia, I asked you to travel to Virginia and to be our keynote speaker and to share about digital persuasion, mm -hmm. which was your first book, still a great book. You can get it on Amazon today. Today, though, only four years later, you are a $25,000 keynote speaker. And yet, like a solid sister, like I said before, you seem to be the same, Aaron. So I just want to know what changed in your world that enabled you to level up so significantly in just four years, 
let alone during the pandemic. Okay, well, first of all, that was so much fun. We were in Williamsburg, Virginia, which I've right. never been to. I did all the tourist things. I saw all the, I went to every museum. I read every plaque. You and I, and uh, who's the redhead gal? What was her name? Jan and Loy. Shannon, like, right. the three of us had all the fun, went to this beautiful winery. You treated me to this gorgeous lunch. I mean, it was such a wonderful time. So thank you again for having me. It was just a blast. And it's interesting. It feels like that was 400 years ago, speaking of Williamsburg, uh, and not just four years ago. Um, I would say, you know, to answer your question, um, how do we grow the business? You know, it really came down to, for us, um, making sure we were running the business of speaking so it wasn't a lifestyle business. We wanted to run it like my other companies. So I, I've run a couple of different ventures. My first company was a web development company that was a total disaster. I started when I was 25 and within 18 months, we were in $70,000 worth of debt. I was, you know, getting cash advances on my personal credit card to pay my employees. It was a hot mess. I had to shut it down. Went back to corporate, dug out of the debt, got some more experience. I was running social media for a Fortune 100 brand. And from there, I raised capital to start my second business, which was called PMS.com. We were an, an online uh, subscription company for women's healthcare needs. Forbes called us the tampon fairies. And again, <laughs> after you know being featured in Forbes and raising capital and learning all about FDA regulations and Chinese shipping policies and products and e-commerce backend systems and warehouse and logistics and all this stuff, again, two years later, the idea didn't really take off. The margins weren't there. And so we had that three-letter URL, which you know, very valuable. So an investor approached us five times the valuation just for the URL. So we had to sell it. And there I was back at square one again. So then finally, as they say, third time's a charm. I realized that even though I sucked at being an e-commerce CEO with PMS.com, the community around the business was the, the internet at the time, the internet's largest collection of women, millions of women coming together. And they were sharing recipes and memes and husband jokes and brownies and having some serious dialogue around women's healthcare issues and underfunded studies. And so we had at one point like 5 million women that were all in this Facebook group talking oh, about wow. PMS and women's healthcare. So if you're listening and you've had a dumpster fire of a disaster business once or twice like me, what was interesting is in the ashes of PMS.com rose the phoenix of my social media company. Because I figured out I can build community. That is something that I can do. And so if you look at the failure that you've gone through, there's always that one golden nugget that you would never have been able to surface had you not walked through those flames. Mm -hmm. And so Socialite, we grew it from just one teeny client at my kitchen table, you know, champagne taste on a beer budget, working very hard on this client. And over the next 10 years, we grew it to run social media biggest brands. I mean, everyone from the Oscars in Hollywood to the United States Navy, we've trained, you know, Barbara Corcoran's sales group, worked with Johnson & Johnson, and we did the Fashion Week, we did Nelson Mandela's Legacy of Hope, you name it, all these big braggadocious clients. And then this past January, we were actually finally acquired by a bigger global agency called Strike Point Media. Oh, cool. Long story long, I'm telling you all of this because what I realized when I started in my speaking business four years ago in meeting all these incredible individuals at NSA was that there was no quote unquote right way to build this book of business. For you, for example, you know, you've been a speaker for years and years. Well, now you have this vibrant coaching community where you're helping these women entrepreneurs to level up. You know, we have mutual friends, uh, Pamela Jett. Pamela Jett's an incredible speaker. She has all kinds of different branches of her speaking business that have, have evolved over the years. We have um, our mutual friend, Laura Gassner Odding, who crushes big keynote stages and isn't really as much into the consulting. We can go on and on. You know, Phil Jones, our friend at NSA, he's certifying coaches with his methodology um, to help them teach persuasion. So everyone has a way they're doing this that makes sense for them. And so what we figured out was let's start at the end of what success is going to look like for us. Is it 60 gigs a year, road warrior, you know, stadiums? 
is it maybe doing a speech here or there, but really focusing on more what you're doing with the coaching and helping women executives? You know, what is success for us? And when I say us, I have a very small team. Uh, my very underpaid camera guy, AV guy, also known as my husband, who <laughs> dedicates two days a week to the business. I'm so thankful. Uh, I have my best friend for 20 years, who was the maid of honor at my wedding. She uh, runs all of our partnerships and operations. I have a virtual assistant named Jen, who does all the details. And then, of course, my Cavapoo, Betty White, is the official mascot. So <laughs> I love that name. We have a very small team. Yeah, she's the best. Um, but so, yeah, it was really kind of getting clear on what success looked like, not just fiscally, but also emotionally. Mm. You know, what, what did we want an average Tuesday at 10 to look and feel like? And we got crystal clear on what that vision was. And what we came up with was sort of a mission statement where we have three key, it's on our mat right here outside of our office in Laguna actually. And on the mat, when you walk into our office, it says three very simple things. It says, help people, it says, have fun. And number three, it says, make money. So it's help people, have fun and make money. And that very simple, sort of very simple mantra of six words, it really helped guide our decisions over the last four years since I last saw you, where as opportunities would come up for online coaching, for a summit, for a keynote, for we get so many requests from executives that want us to come in and help them with their speaking and training their sales and leadership teams. We have MLMs and network marketing companies that want to learn social media. We have women's conferences that want to unlock their big deal energy. So we have all these different buckets. And, and I think the problem people run into is when a lot of opportunity showers upon them. Yes, they're grateful, but they also, as you said earlier, they lose total focus. Mm -hmm. And the shiny object syndrome will propel them into this space where they are, they are just moving at the speed of light, but activity is not necessarily productivity towards what really means, feels like success for them. So we run every single opportunity through those three things. Okay, is this gonna help people? Are we gonna have fun? And are we going to make money? And for the most part, we try to make sure that 75 to 80% of what we say yes to has hopefully three, but at least two. And if it only has one, which oftentimes, think about it, it might be a high paying gig that is just the money, but you know the client's going to be a nightmare. So that's not fun. Right. And maybe you know it's an audience that maybe really isn't, I mean, you could maybe help them, but it's not like your target, target core, you know, they're going to walk out of there and their lives are going to be changed. Or other times, you know, there's no money, but maybe it's a nonprofit that you really believe in, but maybe it's something that isn't that fun. So you have to figure out like, what are you saying yes to? And so by really being, um, uncharacteristically disciplined and thinking about it like a real business with, with real metrics and KPIs and running these opportunities through these three questions, we've been able to been blessed enough to, you know, scale a pretty darn good business. Um, that feels successful emotionally, energetically, and not just fiscally on paper. For women especially, what do you find stands between a woman and her boldest dreams that she says? Mm, big juicy question, love it. What I will say I've seen to be true for my readers, for my community on social media, the biggest thing that stands between us and achieving our big deal dreams is that we are not prepared when the world does not say go girl, when the world more often than not says no girl. Mm. We are not prepared to manage the reactions of others in a way that does not block our momentum and have us shrink smaller from the woman that we know we were born to be. What I mean by that is that, have you ever had one of those days where you wake up and you actually did the workout or you didn't scroll on social media, you had the green juice, you did the gratitude list, you went for your walk, it's 10 a.m. and you're like, am I, am I actually changing the world right now? Like, am I killing this day by 10 a.m.? And then what happens? Maybe you're in line at Starbucks and you give a couple little innocent scrolls on social media. Well, then immediately you begin to compare your beautiful morning to everyone else's beautiful, more successful, prettier, smarter, richer, you name it, morning. And so it's, it's, this, it's this comparison that we do online is one of the things. And I truly believe that there is a difference between 
between unhealthy comparison and a little healthy competition. People will say, don't compare yourselves. That's just crazy. Like we're going to compare ourselves. The world's smartest engineers have been paid a ton of money to make sure that we are addicted with every minute of our attention on escaping from our real lives by looking at everyone else's curated ones. Oh and my so- God, hold on, pause right there. <laughs> we get addicted, which is true. There's studies that show that dopamine hits happen when we're doing the scroll, right? And the smartest minds on earth were paid so much money to figure out how to not only start doing that, but continue doing it. Mm. So think about that. So this, you know, defining the relationship we have with this device is not something that I have conquered, but what I have figured out is that just telling myself or others, don't compare yourself does not work. It doesn't. Think about it. I mean, it's baked into our DNA. It's impossible to not look at someone else. And so what I have learned to be helpful for my clients and myself is to look, pay attention to what comes up with other people. And there's a difference between you see someone and what they're accomplishing and what they're doing and what they're, they're, they're building. And sometimes you think to yourself, oh, why not me? Like, oh, I suck. And it's this just robbing of all your big deal energy and all your confidence and all your audacity. There's another way to look at things where there are certain women that you see. And for some reason, you, you look at her and you go, you know what? Good job, her. Now let's go me. Good job, her. If she can do it, I can do it. And this team scarcity versus team abundance mentality is something that you have to really pay attention to. I mean, I do a Marie Kondo of that newsfeed. And if if women are coming up (laughs) for me in my newsfeed that I don't even try to understand it, I don't judge myself for why I feel less than with one of these gals. I'm like, oh, you're being so high school or so middle school. You don't have to understand it, but you do have to manage it. And so I unfollow, I bless and block, I wish them well. And then I find and replace with someone who helps me feel like we're linking arms where I feel excited for them and inspired for myself. So this, this is one thing that really does block us from our dreams. Being underprepared for other people's reactions is probably the absolute, I would say tied for first because people's reactions to us are just reflections. Their reactions are reflections of how our big, bold, audacious decisions are making them feel. Because people do not want to be reminded that you are where they're not. They don't want to be reminded that their excuses are bullshit because you are proof, you are living evidence that the story they've been telling themselves of why not them actually is complete bullshit. They hate to have that mirror turned around. And so every time that you are chasing down and actualizing what's been on their vision board for five years or on their New Year's resolution list for five years, you know, they might say good job to your face, but deep down the vibe is not supporting you. And so as women, because we were raised to be good girls and because gold stars equaled oftentimes achievement would equal affection in some of our houses. And oftentimes, especially in middle school, which is when women are sort of taught to begin to play smaller and samer and safer to win the middle school politics game on the playground, which most of us women that are big, bold personalities, middle school was not our finest hour because that was the moment that the world told us small up girl, get quiet, get small, get same. We want less of you. And it was so confusing because our inherent nature is big and bold and beautiful and complex and, and loud and unapologetic. And so when you think about this, being underprepared for people's reactions to every time you level up is the fastest way to stop your big deal energy. And so one of the biggest things I preach, I was literally preaching on stage two days ago. And it's, it's kind of back to what you were saying earlier, where you're like, gosh, how are you the same person? I'll tell you this. As women, we are told that we should listen twice as much as we speak. However, if you've ever been in a corporate environment ever, where maybe you're one of the only women at the table, you know that if you actually did that advice, which I think is like stoic philosopher, oh, I think it's Epictetus, Epecti- whatever that guy's name was, he actually said that. But if you think about that, you will never get a word in. And so as women, we have to become bad listeners. We have to become worse at listening. And here's what I mean by that. So so Lady Gaga, for example, I'm a huge fan. I don't know if you are as well, but I love a good Lady Gaga. And I have a girlfriend that went to college with her actually in New York. Wow. And her name before she was famous, you might know, is, was Stephanie Germanata. And I'll never forget this gal telling me that when they were in college, that Lady Gaga was so hated for her ambition 
by her classmates at this artistic creative school that they started a Facebook group called Stephanie Germanata, You Will Never Be Famous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to go to the extent Did you that imagine? you create a Facebook group, like they it means they were really threatened by her creativity, it sounds and her Could you imagine? Mission. No, I can't even Mary imagine. Foley. Mary Foley, you will never be successful. Could oh, you imagine wow. being wow. 20 years old? So so if she had listened, right. she would never have been the first woman ever to win a Grammy, a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, with Emmy, Golden Globe, Academy Award, BAFTA, and there's a fifth one, all in one year. She would have never, ever become this icon. I mean, I, I've done a lot of global training with um, Barbara Corcoran's sales team. I was just training their agents down in Miami last month. And one of her big quotes is she says that when she invests in an entrepreneur, the fastest way that she knows that if she's going to make her money back is if she gives them advice and they ignore her. She said her greatest money makers are the ones who ignore everything that she tells them. And that's how she knows that she has a winner on her hands. <laughs> now, there's a line. There's a line between audacious and asshole, right? I mean, there's a line between <laughs> right, right. delusion and douchebag, right? I mean, we have to be clear here. And so for me, you know, what I have learned is to really just be more intentional about which voices I do allow to have a seat at the table of my life. Do I need to turn them up or turn them down? And the way that I've done that is I have my own personal board of directors. I have my truth tellers. And I think that when you talk about those speakers earlier, where they get to a certain echelon and they lose their way, they, they, their ego outstrips standing in service. They forget that this is a dream job, that we are as replaceable as coffee on the line item of these budgets of these events. Um, they forget. And I think the reason is because what we do, you have to believe you're a big deal. Right. You have to believe your message matters. You have to be your own biggest cheerleader because if you're not going to do it, no one's going to do it. Yes. And there's also an element of truth tellers, the personal board of directors that you have to carefully select, curate, honor, and touch base with to make sure that your audacity is empowering and emboldening you, but not crossing over into the territory of a hole or giving you uh, sort of a delusional level of confidence that isn't serving you or your audience. So for me, I have my top five. I have someone younger than me, someone older than me, someone that's a peer, someone I'm related to, and I have someone that has worked with me professionally for over 10 years. And I, when it comes down to it, I'm at a crossroads, I'm not sure, am I being a big deal? Am I being confident? Am I being audacious? Or am I sort of uh, like, I need to kind of check myself before I wreck myself. I will run it by these truth tellers. And I think without that, it's just very difficult to navigate your way successfully. And so believe in your big, believe in your mission, believe that you have what it takes, believe you're a big deal, become a bad listener, um, encourage others, find the ones that you are having some healthy competition with, but at the end of the day, also have a space of these deep relationships where you don't lose your way, whether you're making 25,000 or 100,000 or 5,000. Um, it's really important that to remember that the, <laughs> the world's huge. I mean, look at so social media. If you wanna check yourself before you wreck yourself, just get, go on social media. There's always someone more famous, more successful, smarter, prettier, you know, better house than you. And so to play that game, or to lose your way, it just isn't serving you. And more importantly, it's not going to serve your audience. And now for the after party, I call Flip the Chip, where I take a few minutes to highlight something my gal pal shared that can help us all flip a challenge or a difficulty that's holding us back into something more positive that helps us move forward. What I want to highlight today is what Aaron shared about how to flip unhealthy comparison that robs your big deal energy into healthy competition, where you go, Good for her. Now let's go me. Because if she can do it, I can do it. Erin offered two practical ideas to implement ASAP. The first one she called bless and block. When anyone comes up on your social media scroll that makes you feel less than, perhaps even for reasons you can't pinpoint, simply unfollow them, wish them well, and find a positive person to replace them with. The second idea she suggested is be a bad listener. I know. You go, what? I'm not sure what that means, but here's what she said. She said, be intentional about which voices have a seat at the table of your life. Create your own board of directors, your truth tellers that you're checking in with so that you can, quote, check yourself before you wreck yourself. One of her great phrases. Erin has a board of five people, one younger, 
one older, one who's a peer, one who's a family member, and one that she's worked with for years. Your collection of truth tellers that you listen to may be different. Of course, you can also use your nail color to cheer you on by simply putting on a new nail color and giving it the name Big Deal Energy so that every time you see your fingers or toes, you're reminded that protecting you and your dreams is key to creating and keeping your Big Deal Energy. You can make good choices to create the career, business, and life you want. One step, one nail color at a time. Look forward to being with you next time on the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast. Thanks for listening to the Live Like Your Nail Color podcast. Ready to live and laugh more? Know a friend who could use some of that too? Then subscribe at livelikeyournailcolor.com or your favorite podcast app. And share this episode right now with the person who popped into your mind. Together, let's flip the chip to be stronger, smarter, and happier. Oh, 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 oh,